some coffee. Mm, that's good. Nice. For those who don't know, Unkept Gentlemen, it was my very first blog ever, and I talked about men's fashion. So there are a lot of ways for your hair to get damaged, obviously, but these five that I'm gonna talk about are the most common, and I see them happen to guys in my men's grooming community, man remains all the time, which if you have any hair questions you want answered or beard questions or you wanna figure out what your hair type is, go download the man remains app in the App Store and the Google Play Store. So let's move on, and I'm gonna start with probably the most underrated but most common way that hair gets destroyed, and that is you're too stressed, right? Stress is actually one of the top destroyers of hair. And I don't mean like in a direct way, like heat or the sun, but underneath the scalp, right? Systemic cortisol in your bloodstream literally suppresses your hair's regeneration and growth cycles. So there's this new 2021 study which was published in Nature Journal that shows how mice under chronic stress kept their hair in a prolonged resting phase, meaning their hair did not grow after transitioning from antigen to telogen, it stayed intelligent. So if you aren't aware, hair grows through three phases. It goes through antigen, which is the growth phase, catagen is the transition phase, and telogen is the resting phase where your hair sheds and then antigen kicks back up again. And what this 2021 study showed is that chronic cortisol in the bloodstream, which is a stress hormone, keeps your hair in that resting phase. Now you might be saying like, oh, this is done on mice, what about humans? So there's also a lot of research on stress and hair growth in humans who have excessive shedding from something called telogen effluvium. So this is where high stress or other things that can lead to stress-like responses, like a poor diet or a prescription med or a virus or an inflammatory producing event that causes a stress-like response prematurely transitions your hair from antigen to telogen and you'll notice excessive shedding. So stress is one of the worst things that can happen for like your hair health beneath the scalp and just hormonal responses. So whatever de-stressing looks like for you, whether that's meditation or vacation or exercise or prayer or whatever that looks like, just do your best to just try to keep the stress as low as possible. So moving on to the next one, we're staying internal beneath the scalp still because healthy hair happens from the inside out, is poor diet. Hair follicles are one of the most metabolically active receptors in the body. So the nutrients you eat are delivered to those follicles and that produces strong or weak hair. So your diet has a very direct effect on how healthy your hair is. So you wanna eat things like protein, iron, zinc, B vitamins, vitamin A, C, E, and D. These are all linked to producing healthy hair. And if you're deficient in these nutrients, it can cause thinning, hair loss, weaker hair. But it's important to note the word deficiency, right? This is the key word, right? If you are deficient in these key hair nutrients, you can restore your hair health by balancing it out and becoming proficient in these nutrients. But if you're not deficient, then more can actually be harmful. And this is one of the reasons I don't really recommend hair supplements because they're not well regulated and it's hard to know how much of a specific vitamin you're getting. For example, studies show selenium, vitamin A, and vitamin E, while they're essential for your hair health, if you're deficient in them, you can definitely lose hair. But if you're not deficient, and you take a hair supplement to try to grow your hair faster or something, and it has high doses of selenium, vitamin A and E, which as you can see here, the top selling supplements on Amazon have high amounts of selenium A and E. And if you over supplement those nutrients, that also has been linked to hair loss. So in my opinion, just stay away from the supplements because they can end up actually doing more damage than good if you're not deficient in something. And instead eat a well-balanced diet full of nutrient rich proteins, fatty acids, fruits and vegetables, just the best thing that you can do to get all the nutrients you need and have healthy hair. So you're not gonna be nutrient deficient, you won't be over supplementing anything on accident. Now, the supplement industry is very unregulated and it's difficult to know how much you're getting. Even when it shows servings on the label, it can still vary from capsule to capsule. So eat healthy, hydrate, get good sleep, de-stress, and that will optimize your hair's health internally and have it grow coming out healthy from the inside out. So let's switch over to some external ways that you can damage your hair. And the first and most common one is too much heat applying heat tools incorrectly, using heat tools wrong. So heat tools are amazing when they're used properly, right? They can make your hair super voluminous, they can make it more wavy, they can add shine, and they can straighten your hair, but there's definitely a dark side, right? Applying heat directly for too long without a heat protectant 
This can damage the cuticle. Damaged cuticles lead to high porosity hair. High porosity hair always looks dull, dry, frizzy, can't hold on to moisture, can't hold on to hydration. So using heat intelligently is the best thing to do. So my recommendation, first and foremost, is always use a heat protectant. So the one that I like is the Thermospray from KMS. It's a great one, but honestly, any heat protectant from the drugstore is better than doing nothing. And when you do use a heat tool, use it on low heat. And unless you're like styling your hair in a certain way with like a heat and a brush combination, or you're trying to do a blowout or something, I always recommend to keep it six inches away and just move it around constantly. This will prevent heat from directly hitting one spot of your head for too long. You can dry your hair quicker. So this study I'll pull up on the screen actually talks about how the closer the blow dryer is, to your hair, the more damage is done to the cuticle. And it's recommended in the conclusion of the study to keep it six inches away in continuous motion for the least damage to the cuticle. So the next mistake that guys commonly do to damage their hair is they brush their hair incorrectly. And what I mean by that is the most common cause of breakage of hair is through high friction and high combing force. So there's this textbook called The Chemical and Physical Behavior of Human Hair, and it breaks it down in this little line graph here. So as you can see, on dry, straight hair, the force is lowest on the scalp when you start brushing on the scalp. And then it spikes when you get to the ends. So this is because the, your ends are usually the most tangled. So if you're just brushing from scalp to ends without detangling your ends first, this could lead to breakage and damage a lot more. So if you see on this graph here with wet hair, the combing force is highest when you first start combing from your scalp to mid shaft, and then it's lowest on the ends. If you have straight hair, in my opinion, the best way to brush it is to, when it's dry, detangle your ends first. And I usually hold my hair around the shaft like this, and then I work my way upward until I can brush smoothly from scalp to ends without any friction or any knotting or tangles. So let's talk about curly hair. On the flip side, the hair's helix when it curls, that, when it's dry, increases the combing force. And that's why it's recommended for curly hair to brush when it's wet because the helix is looser and the overall combing force when it's wet is much lower because the friction went on dry hair when you have the helix is much stronger and can cause your hair to break much easier, easily, easier. So for curly hair, brush your hair in the shower or just after with a wet brush and possibly with like something to add slip, like a leave-in, that will lead to the least amount of friction and force applied to your hair. Final common mistake that can damage your hair is over or under washing. Why is it over or under? So wash frequency is something that's always debated in hair care. How often should you wash your hair? What's damaging, what's not? Because if you wash your hair too much, it could end up irritating your scalp or stripping your hair, the nutrients in your hair too much or breaking down the cuticles. And if you don't wash enough, you could build up too much grease and bacteria on your scalp and that could lead to some other problems, skin problems. So what should you do? The right answer is wash your hair as infrequently as possible for you, right? It's a vague answer because everyone is different. So if you have naturally overactive sebaceous glands and your scalp is always oily, then as infrequently as possible might mean daily. And if you have a dry scalp, as infrequently as possible might mean waiting four to five days to give your scalp some time to produce the oils again. And it's also really important to use like a really high quality formula. So how do you know what's quality and what isn't? Well, I typically tell people that most of like the super cheap drugstore shampoos, not all of them, but a lot of them are diluted down to like mostly water and the first and second ingredient are the highest percentages, which for shampoo is usually a detergent, which gives you that clean feeling and it can be quite stripping. And then they load up on conditioning agents to give you that sensory feeling of soft hair. So it feels like it's working but it could be like not pH balanced and it could be a little more harsh on your hair than you realize when used over time. Whereas higher quality formulas like salon grade products, they don't dilute the formulas as much. They have a lot more higher percentages of amino acids and proteins and nutrients your hair needs. And it's also much more pH balanced, which that is actually one of the most important things to look for in products. So you want your shampoo and conditioner to be a pH of around four to five and a half. So there's a 2014 study in the International Trichology Journal that measured the pH of 123 shampoos. And surprisingly, only 38% of popular drugstore brand shampoos fell below 5.5 pH, whereas 75% of salon grade shampoos fell below five and a half 
pH. So in conclusion, try to go for salon quality as much as you can. Let me just give you a few like affordable options that are up there in quality, but not like insanely expensive. So I think Goldwell is an affordable option. Living Proof makes really good products as well. And I also like the JVN product line. So I'm gonna link to those three in the description. They're not insanely expensive and then they're not like dirt cheap either. So those five things are just the most common ways that I see guys damaging their hair. And that's all for this video. As always, all of my research is linked in the description. You can go fact check, do whatever you want. You can read up, study, dive deeper into it if you want. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.